He treated me like I wasn't even worth his time. Okay. So what do you want me to tell Eliza? I don't care. You don't care. You don't care what I tell our grieving mother? I have spent my entire life protecting this whole family, and I will not do it again. No, can you please turn it off? I can't watch oh, any more of this. Just stop it. That was horrible. Ah, that scene was painful. And delightful. You would think that. But to fully appreciate the depth of feeling the characters in the scene are experiencing, how they've grown, the blind spots they still have, and to make ourselves sadder, we need to take a closer look at the super family dynamics throughout the years. I'm Cycles. I'm Vivi. And this is Supergirl's Attic. Last night when we made the arrangements, I never said that I was participating. This episode starts off with a conflict over the funeral for Jeremiah, Alex's dad, and Kara's foster father, and the very different ways the sisters are coping with his death. So, to understand why Alex and Kara have such divergent reactions to Jeremiah's death, let's compare how each of them has confronted a parent's betrayal in the past. In season one, Kara discovered that her mother knew that Krypton was dying, and that she sent her twin sister, Astra, to prison for her terroristic efforts to prevent it. It was necessary. Could she have saved us? She was a criminal. But was she right? The emotional core of the scene is that Alora was not the morally perfect person Kara thought she was. My mother was the best woman who ever lived. She lied to me. And that the decisions she made may have resulted in the destruction of Krypton. You let In season two, Kara was suspicious that Jeremiah might have been working with the morally bankrupt Cadmus organization, and Alex lashed out at her for betraying their family. Because you're either part of the family or you're not. You don't mean that. He's my father. He's mine too. Then act like it! Then Alex discovered that Kara was correct. He betrayed everyone at the DEO. Your friends. Our family. Everyone. That I love! The emotional core of this scene is that Jeremiah betrayed their family. Both Kara and Alex felt abandoned because their parents had more of a hand in their separation than they previously thought, but the issue for Alex is that Jeremiah willingly left their family, while the issue for Kara is that Allura didn't live up to their family's moral values. For Kara, leaving your loved ones is acceptable if it's in pursuit of the greater good. My mother didn't send me to Earth to fall in love with a human and have children. She sent me here to protect kal And now I will use my powers to protect the Earth. And if I die achieving that, I'm at peace with it. Jeremiah making up for his moral failings, protecting aliens instead of forcibly deporting them, resolves the main issue Kara had with him. You know what, I'm, I'm also relieved to know he was a good man, that that brought me some peace. But Alex's issues aren't nearly as resolved. Jeremiah was changing his ways, he was helping people, making amends. Well, not to me. In fact, Alex's feelings of betrayal seem to be exacerbated by the fact that Jeremiah died while protecting aliens. In season two, Alex and Kara fought about how Alex's single-minded goal of bringing Jeremiah home had her acting questionably, and Kara feared Alex would choose to save Jeremiah over saving the aliens he was trying to deport. And deeper still, Alex has repeatedly expressed her resentment about how she was burdened with the difficult task of keeping Kara, an alien refugee, and their family safe, and that she believed Kara received preferential treatment from their parents. He treated you like you were some golden girl. And of course, you have love for him, and I totally respect that. But he treated me like I wasn't even worth his time. But why is Kara so upset by this? Okay. Why does she seem hurt? Perhaps because this... We could finish each other's sentences. But his obsession with keeping you safe changed all of it. Sounds a lot like this. Because my mom wasn't constantly on my ass before you came along, and I am pretty sure my dad wasn't gone before you came along. 
How is that my fault? Before you crashed in that pod, I had a great life with two great parents. Now all I have is you, and you are not worth it. As much as Alex blaming Kara here is irrational, they do find out as adults that Jeremiah joined the DEO to protect Kara, and clearly Alex has since connected those dots. My, my whole life has been about protecting you. I thought you said it was a great adventure. Yes, but it's cost me a lot. It cost me my father. So Kara sometimes struggles with feeling like Alex would be better off without her in her life. I want you to have a good life. I want you to find love and be happy. I want you to do all the things that being my sister kept you from doing. What if I moved to Metropolis to be with Clark? You'd be able to do your job at the DEO without worrying about me. Remember when she said she felt like her life was on pause and she didn't know why? She couldn't figure out what was holding her back. It's me. I'm what's holding her back. So it's likely that, in a roundabout way, Kara is feeling blamed in this moment for Jeremiah's death, even though we learn he died of natural causes. But for Alex, there's another insecurity lurking behind her insecurity with regard to Kara. Are there like extra emotions that I don't know about? Under stress, Alex often displays characteristics of someone with a dismissive avoidant attachment style. Attachment theory was created by John Bowlby as a way of understanding how children's relationships with their parents will impact their future relationships with others. A child with a secure attachment style is confident that their emotional and physical needs will be met and will theoretically have those same expectations for the relationships they have as adults. A child with a dismissive avoidant attachment style, out of fear that their needs will not be met, will act as if they just don't have needs, both outwardly to others and to themselves. They then carry this mindset into their future relationships. So Alex, as a result of Kara's adoption altering the family dynamic, loses the secure attachment to her parents that she'd experienced as a young child. In these opening scenes, Alex is doing everything she can to avoid feeling or demonstrating vulnerability. She resists the attempts of her loved ones to try to get into her head to help her. I really can't tolerate being psychoanalyzed by my girlfriend right now. I know you're in pain. I'm not in pain. Of course you are. Okay, stop telling me how I feel. Even though it's clear to everyone that she's not okay, Alex spends almost the entirety of these scenes positioned physically above everyone else, standing at a distance, quite the contrast with the end of Alex's arc in this episode. In these scenes, she only moves closer to go on the offense to compel others to retreat from her. This is a go-to defense mechanism for Alex, who will regularly lash out when she's upset. It will get better. Yeah. Are you bitter? Okay. When I'm with Clark, I feel like I'm connected to somebody who actually understands what it's like to be me. So does he understand that he abandoned you with us? Do you? Also contributing to these moments when Alex has lashed out is her tendency to repress the feelings that she fears having until she reaches a breaking point and emotionally unloads. Verbal attacks also happen to be the only truly effective tool Alex can use against Kara to get her to back off. So, at the end of this exchange between the sisters, Alex employs both emotional and physical distancing tactics by yelling at Kara and then storming off into the bathroom because there's nowhere else for her to go. And even though Alex is physically separating herself from both Kara and Jean, she knows that, thanks to their extra normal abilities, they could easily follow her if they wanted to. So for Alex, physically separating herself from them is a way of demonstrating that she's finished with this conversation. Later, Kelly tries to support Alex emotionally. I will give you space. But just know that I love you and I'm here for you unconditionally. But Alex puts her hand up in resistance because she can't handle being loved right now. And this isn't the first time she's rejected comfort after feeling abandoned. Someone cuts something out of you and you feel the hole every day. A hole you dug in yourself. What happened? Alex. Alex can't accept these displays of affection because that means admitting how much she wants them. 
And because on some level, she doesn't think that she deserves that comfort. But the reality is that I was just mad at myself. Because I couldn't save him. Alex can admit that she thinks Jeremiah loved Kara, but didn't care about her, can admit that losing him over and over again is painful, but she won't discuss the core insecurity that has followed her since her adolescence. So why hasn't it ever enough? And that's why losing Jeremiah hurts so much. Alex dismisses the idea that she has any emotional needs, like being told that she's not responsible for Jeremiah's death, because she's afraid they won't be met. And in some ways, she's right. Alex spent years suppressing insecurities about whether or not Eliza loved her as much as she loved Kara, and it took Kara opening up about who she was to tip Alex toward opening up as well. Once she expressed those feelings, Eliza clarified her previous behavior. You, you're my daughter, Alex. I wanted you to be better than me. But that never meant I didn't love you. You have always been my super and took steps to change the way she related to Alex, they were able to mend their relationship. Alex can't do that with Jeremiah. <gasps> Not anymore. But that doesn't mean that Alex can't evolve her understanding of that relationship, that they can't all grow. In spite of all the twists and turns that Jeremiah's life took, the kindness, compassion, and love, that was real. Alex is hurting now, and it's hard for her to remember how Jeremiah really saw her. But her family can remind her. That one, Alex, she's tough. Alex, you are the strongest of us all. Your father always said that. I know he is watching over you. I know he'd be so proud. Your father believed in you. I believe in you too. And as much as years-long conflict and hurt comes to the surface in this episode, we can also see how far the characters have come. Jean promised Jeremiah that he would take care of Alex and Kara, and spent years looking after them from the outside, mourning the loss of his own two daughters. Now, however, he's embraced being a genuine father figure to Alex and Kara, just as they've embraced him. In this episode, he's entirely comfortable going after Alex after she lashes out, and he makes sure that Alex's significant other knows she can reach out to him for help. Kara was faced with the idea that she is a burden to Alex in this episode, and this conflict between the sisters clearly hasn't been resolved forever. But Kara was also noticeably more comfortable with her role in the Danvers family than she has been in the past. Unlike within the season two Jeremiah conflict, Kara is comfortable participating here, actively involved in making the funeral arrangements for Jeremiah, and willing to confront Alex about her plan to skip the funeral, despite the tension that always arises at mentions of her father. Before season four, Kara pointedly referred to Eliza as her foster mom. So how was breakfast with your mom? Foster mom. Maintaining a degree of separation from being a Danvers. But here, we see her take ownership of that relationship. You don't care what I tell our grieving mother. Notably, she does not refer to Jeremiah in the same way. You're refusing to go to your father's funeral. Kara hasn't always been cognizant of Alex's tendency to hide her feelings. But in recent years, she's made a conscious effort to bring them out as much as possible, something we see her do in this episode. As for Alex, she still struggles with poor coping mechanisms and with letting people in, but there's also been visible progress on both of these fronts. And that's why this short scene is enough to resolve the conflict between Alex and Kara for the time being. They can't change the paths they've taken. Both Alex and Kara have tried. But they can move forward, surrounded by loved ones who love them unconditionally. Sorry for all the things that I said. It doesn't matter. You're here now. 